Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Yang bahagia Datuk Dr. Muhammad Razib Aji Hassan, Director General Islamic Tourism Center. Yang berusia Puan Rafida Hamdul Aziz, Under Secretary International Cooperation and Development, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you. Greetings from the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Malaysia and Islamic Tourism Center. First and foremost, it is my pleasure to bid you selamat datang or welcome to this short course on strategizing tourism for culture and heritage preservation under the Malaysian Technical Cooperation Program, MTCP, organized by Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Malaysia and coordinated by Islamic Tourism Center, ITC, an agency under the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture of Malaysia, MOTEC. I am pleased to meet all of you and consider that you are fortunate to be selected for this five-day course on the topic of tourism, culture and heritage. Malaysia is honored to share our experience in this area and we hope that this course will drive efforts for the preservation of culture and heritage in your respected countries. I have been informed that this is the 15 MTCP short course organized and coordinated by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and ITC. Though this year's program is unique in that it is conducted virtually for the first time in response to the current norms, we view it as even more pressing now to address sustainability issues in light of the pandemic and its consequences. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, culture and heritage have always been linked to tourism. One of the pillars of the tourism industry has been mankind's inherent desire to see and learn about the cultural identity of different parts of the world. Cultural tourism is defined by the UNWTO as tourism centered on cultural attractions and products. It is one of the fastest growing segments of the industry, accounting for an estimated 40% of all tourism worldwide. It intersects with heritage and religious sites, crafts, performing arts, gastronomy, festivals and special events, among others. Meanwhile, heritage tourism is a branch of tourism focus on the cultural heritage of the location where tourism is occurring. In domestic tourism, cultural heritage stimulates national pride in one's history. In international tourism, cultural heritage encourages a respect and understanding of other cultures and, as a consequence, promotes space and understanding. Culture and heritage attractions are, by nature, unique and fragile. Therefore, it is fundamental that tourism authorities study how best to develop these cultural heritage sites while protecting and preserving them for the long term. Damage done to culture and heritage attractions can hurt their destination's cultural identity permanently. Being a multiracial and multicultural country with a long and interesting history as the key global trading nation, Malaysia naturally has a wealth of culture and heritage assets. Malaysia's special appeal is due to our diverse population made up of Malays, Indians, Chinese and numerous ethnic communities. This diversity manifests itself into our cuisine, celebrations, architecture, handicrafts, traditional costumes, language, and more. It serves as a unique attraction for global travelers who are curious to see how a diverse population such as Malaysia can live and socialize together peacefully. As such, we take the preservation of culture and heritage to heart and put much focus into it. Malaysia recently outlined the National Tourism Policy 2020-2030 with strategies included for the sustainable and responsible practice of tourism. 
guided by the United Nations Sustainable Tourism Development Goals, UNSDGs, the National Tourism Policy enforces the role of tourism as a catalyst for economic development in a sustainable, responsible, and inclusive manner. To further strengthen our efforts, we will soon launch the National Culture Policy too, which is a comprehensive five-year plan to address the challenges and opportunities in cultural preservation. So important is culture and heritage to Malaysia that in 2006, the Department of National Heritage was established with the responsibility to preserve and conserve Malaysia's national heritage assets according to National Heritage Act 2005. Some of these assets have been enshrined as UNESCO World Heritage Sites, namely Gunung Mulu National Park, Kinabalu Park, the historic cities of Malacca and Georgetown, and the archaeological heritage of the Lengon Valley. Others have been officially listed in Malaysia's National Heritage Register. All these are seen to be potential tourist attractions. From the presentations over the next few days, you will see how Malaysia has leveraged on this access for tourism, giving close attention to preservation and restoration efforts, and the role of government, private sector, and local community for successful implementations. Ladies and gentlemen, as cultural heritage attractions are unique and fragile by nature, it is fundamental that tourism authorities study how to best develop this cultural heritage sites and protecting and preserving them for the long term. With more than 1,000 natural and cultural sites already inscribed on the World Heritage List, the current challenge for the different international organizations is to ensure that their values are safeguarded amidst to a rapidly changing and globalized world. Tourism is often perceived as a threat to conservation of world heritage. In fact, tourism is a platform and a vehicle for presenting heritage to the public, conserving it and granting its economic and social viability. Hence, tourism is in most cases as a balancing mechanism that keeps and protects the heritage itself. As chairman of the Islamic Tourism Center, I wish to draw your attention as well as to another potential in culture and heritage tourism that has shown great success in Malaysia. What I am referring to is the huge potential and opportunities in Islamic tourism. For over a decade, Malaysia has put effort into presenting Malaysia as a Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality destination. This branding has benefited Malaysia economically. At the height of tourism in 2019, just before the pandemic, Malaysia welcomed 5.33 million Muslim tourists to our shores. This translated to Ringgit Malaysia 16.72 billion in Muslim tourist receipts or approximately USD 4 billion. By positioning Malaysia as a Muslim-friendly tourist destination, with facilities that meet Muslim tourists' faith-based needs, we have been able to attract the Muslim travel market successfully. Traveling to Malaysia not only experience Malaysia's Islamic history and its manifestation in architecture, cuisine, dress, communications, and celebrations, they also get to experience the Malaysian Muslim lifestyle in multicultural Malaysia. With the rise of the Muslim global population in excess to 1.8 billion and growing, it may be wise to consider this niche yet lucrative tourist market in developing your country's potential tourism policies. We have seen non-Muslim or Muslim minority countries such as Thailand, Singapore, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong and Australia moving into this direction. They may not have a big Muslim population or history of Islamic civilization, but what they do have 
are interesting and unique natural culture and heritage assets. By implementing Muslim-friendly tourism policies, brandings and marketing efforts, as well as services, facilities and infrastructure to accommodate the Muslims' faith-based needs, these countries have successfully promoted their culture and heritage to appeal to the Muslim tourist market. While the government play an important role in setting up policies and national plans to strategize tourism for culture and heritage preservation, implementing it requires the effort of different parties. Tourism industry stakeholders from product and service operators, developers, local councils, and local community all have responsibilities to protect the culture and heritage of their motherland so that the destination's identity will not be lost. The roles played by different parties in ensuring tourism can, contrib can contribute to the preservation of culture and heritage will be highlighted throughout this course. ITC has invited industry experts from the government, private and academic sector to share their practices and experience with all of you. Topics addressed include responsible and sustainable tourism as presentations of Malaysia's preservation and restoration efforts, the opportunity to involve rural communities in culture and heritage tourism, public-private sector partnership in advancing culture and heritage tourism, and many more. Throughout the course, I encourage participants to socialize and share your experiences and ideas with each other. I have learned that all of you are respected and experienced government officers, so this platform will be used to have further intellectual discussions that will benefit us all. Ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude my speech, I wish to welcome all of you again to this MTCP course. It is certainly one of those opportunities where we get to foster close relations at the global level and play a key role in the advancement of your knowledge and understanding of tourism. ITC has organized 14 of such courses prior, collectively gathering 184 government officials involved in the tourism industry from developing countries around the world as participants. ITC has followed their post-MTCP progress closely and have found that participants have enjoyed great success in their respective positions. ITC has planned to launch the ITC MTCP alumni this year to bring together past participants as members. With such a large global, high-ranking and influential membership within the alumni, the ITC MTCP alumni will provide yet another platform for these great minds to interact and network with each other after the course. This is our effort to bring value to your learning experience with us, and we trust that this will foster strong relations among us on a, on a personal, professional, and governmental level for all in years to come. Finally, I thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for giving the opportunity to the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, and Culture through Islamic Tourism Center to conduct this MTCP short course again. While it is unfortunate that we cannot physically meet, I'm still thankful that I was given the opportunity to talk to all of you today. In Islam, in it belief that we don't meet people by accident, the Almighty puts people in our lives, in our lives for reasons. I hope that you will enjoy this course and have something to take home by the end of the course. Malaysia is always ready to welcome you all physically in Malaysia soon. Thank you very much.